Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the program. My name is Greg Willits from RosaryArmy.com. And I'm Jennifer Willits, his wife. Hope you're doing well. Make sure, uh, if you haven't already, to subscribe to this channel. If, just click the little buttons and the notifications and all that thing. We love hearing comments from you. We've gotten some really nice comments recently from folks, and it's always very edifying to actually hear from you, That uh, those of you who are watching the program on YouTube in particular, and then if you're listening to the show, uh, however you listen to it, particularly if you listen via iTunes, if you're going over and leaving some reviews, just trying to do a little bit more this year as uh, we're in the new year, trying to build up the audience and do what we can. And and you play such a huge role in helping us to do that. So liking the video, subscribing to the channel, leaving comments, that all helps on the video side of things, on the audio side of things, your reviews. Appreciate it very much. Uh, also, I've uh, been getting some super nice comments. I shared this a few weeks ago from our newsletter. I haven't set up a, an official way for you to sign up for it, but if you sign up for anything on Roji Army, whether it be School of Mary, take some of those classes that we have available to you for free there, or if you sign up for you know downloading the prayer sheet or downloading uh, anything like the uh, making instructions or getting a free rosary, you'll go on our mailing list automatically, but been able to share some stories. I, I I hope I can k- kind of keep it up. G- got a neat. Um, you didn't. You haven't read the last couple that I've sent out, but the nope. one the one that I sent out yesterday, uh, Chris in Minnesota almost immediately sent me an email, and he touched on something I've actually been mulling over in the back of my head a little bit. You know, it's not that I I don't need. I I certainly do not need more things to do, but he said that the way that I've been writing these. It's very much in my voice, and he can hear it. And he Mm -hmm. said he would like for it to be an audio version, for me to just to read the newsletter, basically, and make that available. And it would be sort of like short burst of a podcast, which makes me think of something that um, another Mm -hmm. supporter of Rosie Army, Jenny, has said many times that she wishes that there was just a regular short, 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 short form Rosie Army podcast that was more like, you know, things to think about, some nuggets of spiritual wisdom, you know, read something that struck me and, and share that rather quickly. Like five minutes in length, kind of short? Like how short is short? Okay. Depends on who you talk to, right? Yeah. Short is very subjective. I, I think it would probably take me 10 minutes to read the newsletter, I think, out loud. Um, And I wouldn't want to just read it because that's boring to me, right? I would want to... I'd want to produce it, <laughs> but, but I don't, I, but I don't, yeah. I don't want anything no. that's kind of crazy. So the no. thing that, the thing that's kind of got me thinking is even though we technically recorded the very last episode of our original rosary army podcast way back in November of 2008, that I, we still have that feed and there's still several hundreds, if not a couple thousand people still subscribe to that feed, even though we haven't done a new show since 2007, uh, 2008, I have for years thought how cool it would be just to have some sort of Rosary Army quick hit podcast and just slip it in there. So that got me thinking. It's like I'm already creating the content. Take me another 15 minutes to do something else. But then here's the thing. It's like even even the newsletter I sent out yesterday, I wanted to make it a blog, and I haven't even posted it on the blog yet. So I just I don't know if I'm creating more work okay. for myself than is necessary. I think that there's a lot of uh, value to considering reading the newsletter. And I know that you said that's kind of boring to me. But you have to remember it isn't for you to listen to. It is just for the people who want to oh, hear your voice. There's value in me me reading the yes. newsletter. I, and, I, I and misunderstood. Podcasting I, I thought that. you were I thought you were saying because then you said and, and that's kind of boring to you. I'm like well, I don't think my newsletter is boring. No, I'm, not, no. I'm just saying that. The audio version of what you wrote. <clears throat> and and I know that that means something to you to get like a bigger bang for your buck, like yeah, yep. to get a lot of value out of producing one thing and broadcasting it in multiple yeah. forms. I've always been a big fan so, of that. I think that's, it's, smart, it's a smart thing to do, which is why I try to remember to post uh, the, the blog, mm-hmm. post it over on the blog when it's appropriate. I mean, if it's just something that's like a, I don't know. Quick. No, I think that's a great idea. So I was actually I was, really I was thinking good. about that because some of the uh, I've been really surprised and I've shared that I, I I said something actually just yesterday I had a conversation with um, Tim Drake from Pachman Terrace. Did I tell you that? I'm so glad to hear you say that. No, you didn't tell me that you did that, but I had a made a mm-hmm. mental note by 
in a couple of days' time, if you had not had that conversation, I was going to remind you again. Yeah. So I'm glad you so actually followed through. I didn't nail down a time to go on, on a retreat. I basically, here's my thinking. I was thinking, hey, Tim, let me know when Pacham is needing to have people there, and I'll go then. Which is, he, he's like, no, anytime's a good time. Yeah, right. So I what? knew he'd say that. And and so so then it turned back on me. I just have to pick a time. You do. And, and, and then... Part of my frustration <clears throat> this morning is I finally did something that's very difficult for me to do. It's just time consuming and it's a task that I, I scheduling guests is very hard for me because it's just an admin heavy thing and there's a whole bunch of steps that I'm not going to go into because I don't like to do it in the first place. So I don't want to tell you about all the steps, but it involves like updating a bunch of things before I can even send out an invite to an author or whoever to be on the program. And so then I tend to, when I finally do all of these steps, I tend to invite a whole bunch of people at once. And I like knocking out a bunch of interviews and having them banked and trying to get us ahead a month or two when possible. And it's been a long time since that happened. So I finally did that a couple of days ago, just as I'm also trying to figure out when I could possibly go on a retreat. Mm-hmm. And we've already gotten like three people, three potential guests have already signed up for s- spots Right when I was thinking about going on the retreat, I was like, "Why did I not block? Why did I not block out the time in advance uh, before I started doing that? Because I just haven't made the decision of when to go and that kind of yeah. thing." So, anyway, so it could be rescheduled. I, I don't know why I jumped. Oh, I was ta- when I was talking to to Tim, we were talking about reusing content, and, and I was t- talking about the long form newsletter and how surprised I was and have been by the responses to it, mm-hmm. and. I'm also very torn. For those of you who are subscribed to my Substack, particularly those who pay to be a part of the Substack, and I feel I'm racked with guilt over there. That's a whole other thing because when I started the Substack, it was let me do something that's completely kind of away from the nonprofit, just an experimental area. And I started doing these these uh, these these essays. Mm-hmm. Did I talk about this already? No, no, no. I'm just affirming you. <laughs> I, I talked about, uh, I, I wanted to write these essays, and then I started writing some essays that just became kind of where it just wasn't prudent to share on the show yet. Mm-hmm. It started to become more, it's just things that I'll share it eventually, just now is not the time. But like I ended up writing a few things that were like 50, 60 pages long that are quite good, I think, but it's just not prudent to share. But I've kind of have missed the the regular rhythm of doing an essay. At the same time, I've been doing this serialized um, novel that I haven't done a new chapter for for a couple months. And so people are like, you know, they're they're pitching into the tip jar over there to help me mm-hmm. stay motivated to keep keep writing. Well, the newsletters are kind of scratching that itch of what the original Substack thing was supposed to do. And I like the fact that I feel like I feel like the Substack thing was necessary, but and I feel like there might be some essays that I want to share over there eventually that, that are more suitable over there than on the Rosier Army side. But the things that I've been writing about on Rosier Army, I feel have just been nice stories to, to help people really feel a greater part of the mission and the community. And, and so I've been sharing a little bit more personal stuff in the newsletters than I ever have before. And then the response has been, very positive. So, Well, I totally get what you're saying. And I actually started to make that observation myself. I actually thought this is like Substack writing in the newsletter. Yeah. Now, here's what I will say about our wonderful. In that, in that it's longer form. Yes. And more, more personal. N- more narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Here's what I will say about our amazing uh, supporters on Substack. We know most of them. No. <laughs> We well, know, the, the, maybe the ones that are paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the paying the <clears throat> paying ones. And here's what I will say that is likely in, in their minds on their behalf. They're not paying you to write. You must write through this door, through the Substack door. They're just paying for you to write. No matter where you write, they're going to consume the content, even if it comes through another door. Okay. So they're just saying, That's please fair. write. I like when you write. I will show you that monetarily that I like when you write. And so it's not a wasted, just to ease yeah. up on the guilt. But but I understand exactly what you're saying. And I haven't given up on too. the on the. Uh, I'm, oh, I know you'll get back to it on on the on the novel because it's like yeah. the novel's already written. Yeah. The Substack is me rewriting the novel. Yes. And so it's yeah. just a matter of <clears throat> sitting down and doing the edits and the rewrites, and that's 
you know, I'm, I'm trying to putting a lot of polish on stuff is oftentimes harder than, than writing the actual book. You know, when you just kind of blast out the story and get it out of your brain. Um, so, so it's, you know, that's all that's kind of been in my head. And one of the things that I've been mulling over for next week's newsletter is something that you and I have been mulling over talking about today and, and how prudent it is. You know, there's certain things that happen in our personal lives that we're just like, how, how much do we talk about this and how much right. do we share? <laughs> yeah. Um, for, for example, and you know, I I've gone back and forth, back and forth on this, but, um, we had a death in the family and I don't want to go into details. Um, it affected us, but not as much as it affected other people because just, we didn't really have as much of a relationship with, with this, uh, person. So, um, I don't even want to, I, out of respect for everyone involved, just if you would pray for our soul, um, I'll say that. So we've been dealing with that, and that's that's been a bit of a heartache the last week. Um, on top of that, a couple days after that happened, and we we're trying to process that, mm -hmm. we had an, um, we had a, a massive scam incident happen where, uh, and this happens more and more, right? I mean, there's businesses that are built up, and there have been for many years now, around identity theft, around um, digital cyber uh, theft protection. You know, there's insurance agencies to, to help you with these kinds of things. If, unfortunately, we were able to stop it, uh, what was happening, but it required us going up to the bank. And basically, someone tried to uh, get access to uh, one of our bank accounts, at least one. And, and we just out of an abundance of precaution, we went ahead and closed all of our major accounts and reopen new ones with new cards and new passwords and, yeah. and everything else. But it really was an eye-opening uh, experience for us because, you know, how easy it is, even with, I, I feel like I am very, very, I, I use the word paranoid, but paranoid is a, has a negative connotation. I feel like I'm very, very cautious. I, I'm, I'm skeptical when someone's asking me questions. When someone reaches out to me out of the blue, I typically... Um, go towards it with a, a heightened level of, of I'll say caution rather than suspicion. Basically, I feel like people are out to get me all the time. So it's that's like, really what I, it is. And, 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 <laughs> and, you know, and I feel like I have some validity yeah. to this. I mean, yeah. having had uh, certain levels of betrayals in the past and, and people who I thought I could trust that did life changing things to me, I, it, it makes me very heightened. It makes me very suspicious of people. And, and in this case, uh, rightfully so, to be suspicious. Well, again, thank goodness. Um, as soon as we realized what was happening, as soon as we realized that there was a vulnerability and that there was an actual cyber attack happening on our bank accounts, to the to the fact that the bank said that we probably want to get the FBI involved. It was that to put to put the high level on it. It was a major, major thing that that could have um, could have been catastrophic. Quite honestly, if we right. hadn't stopped it. <clears throat> and so, as soon as we realized what was happening, we're on the phone with the bank. We're like halt everything stop every payment anything that you see that's going out stop it and you know jennifer's holding her computer and she's on the phone as we're walking out to get into the truck and we're driving to the bank on hold with one person and, and communicating and and you'd already notified our contact at at our local bank that who's been immensely helpful and when we walked in he's on the phone with their with the institution's security systems as well and so then we're up there Friday Friday afternoon. God bless the guy. Stayed half an hour after the bank closed <clears throat> as we're just like getting all this stuff taken care of. Now, all of these things happened. And you, you and I both kind of handled these things from a different perspective. I, I kind of saw what was happening. And then when it actually happened and, and an attack had happened, a cyber attack, I'll call it that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> had happened against our, our banking um, stuff, there was a heightened level of panic, and I had to stop and, and, and multiple times <clears throat> and say, does Mary and Jesus have this or not? And that kind of became, I had to keep stopping myself and say that. Does Jesus and Mary have this or not? Will they allow something bad to happen, but can they turn something good out of that or not? And ask myself those kinds of questions. Because otherwise, immediately I went to, this is a disaster. We're going to be ruined. Uh, I'm going to have to go off and, you know, I don't know how we're going to make up for all, of, you know, what could potentially be lost if we don't stop all this. And then I, I not, 
you know, being a little ignorant of banking institutions, I, I wasn't really thinking in terms of like, well, the bank is insured for these kinds of things. So we'll get the anything that's taken, the bank's covering. It, we're okay. You know, that, that that I didn't know right out of the mm-hmm. gate. And it wasn't until we're like on the way to the to the bank and you said that, I went, oh, I just assumed anything that gets taken out of our account gets taken out of the account. And it's and it's all on us. You know, that's just kind of my assumption. So feeling pretty scared. And how do we approach this? And then when we finally get to the bank and got and you know, start dealing with the the employee there <clears throat> who's already taken care of things and he confirmed, you know, what happened was it was like an IT spoofing thing. I mean that you know, we don't again. We don't want to go into a lot of details of what happened, but but the he confirmed our worst suspicions, but he confirmed we're getting it taken care of, and he was very calm. And when I started to realize everything was all right, I realized I was completely parched. I was and I mm. and I was and I was shaking and didn't realize I was shaking, and I felt lightheaded and I didn't realize I felt lightheaded, and it was like sort of like this rush of everything. So dealing you know with the an unexpected death, you know, in the extended family a couple of days before, and then all of a sudden sitting in their bank and, and worrying about everything that, you know, our livelihood, all these things all of a sudden rushed up. And I was just like, I, I need to be out of this tiny room. I need to go get some water and I need to do it right now. In that rush of all that, you know, was I trusting or not? And why do we react that way to such a, huge it wasn't an overreaction i think it was an appropriate reaction it was there was a a legitimate we were legitimately attacked it was done you know through a bank account but it was an attack it was a violation it was a scam it was a con that was done on us that it was very very discombobulating because our safety net had been severed had been cut and we felt like we were you know free falling so these are all the thoughts that were going through my mind at the moment what would you like to interject at this point? Well, obviously, what's interesting about this whole thing is that we both processed the same event slightly differently because he has his personality and the way he's wired, and I have my personality and the way that I'm wired. And once I realized what was happening, I immediately went to, you know, what where did I go wrong? How did I participate in this terrible thing? And why was I so trusting? And I started to really reflect on my character. And my character is that I'm super empathetic by nature and I'm super trusting of everyone. Everyone is good. Nobody is bad. Why would anybody hurt me? We live in a great world. I mean, like that's my default position. (laughs) And so what made this cyber attack so underhanded and evil was how it was a distortion of a good and how much it was all packed and saturated with lies. But they were lies I couldn't see in the beginning. And I believed everything was true on this phone call that I received. And there was just Mm -hmm. enough truth in this call that it made me feel that I'm speaking to a verified person who's on my side to help me. And I didn't realize all of that was false. I didn't realize that the verification emails I was receiving to verify this event were, in fact, lies. Yeah. I thought they were true. They were able to send verification emails, verification texts. Uh, Their phone number was our bank's phone number. Mm -hmm. I I mean, across the board, it was – for as many scams – I mean, I watch – scam YouTube channels. I I mean this is something I enjoy watching is professional hackers trick scammers. Okay. And stop scammers from scamming people out of their money. And so I feel like you know, hey, I understand all <laughs> right. of the tricks. Right. right. <laughs> this guy was very good. Well, he was I, very I, believable. I, I want to flat out judge him and say this guy was evil. Well, but he he represents evil in the story. Yeah, he de- he definitely represents evil in the story. I mean, just to get to the, I mean, for anyone who does this kind of thing, and this was kind of a, and this is something we can come back to here, reflecting on what happened to him to get him to that point. Well, yeah, I mean, because he's a real person. I was speaking to a real human being with. He was very calm, very professional. 
He gave me plenty of time to do what I needed to do to let's resolve this. I'm going to help you. I'm going to stop this. We're going to fix this. And that's that was part of the scam was to, you know, it was a con. It was like, you know, thinking about Sawyer on Lost, you know, he was into the long cons for all of those poor victims. And they you don't know that you're a victim. You don't even know. You think you're just being helped by someone who's got your back. Um, and then when I realized that that was not the case and how horrible I felt, um, obviously, there were so many things to be grateful for, honestly, in this experience. It happened early enough in the day that there was time for us to resolve the situation in a, in a physical branch and everything was fine. And I knew that they were helping me uh, to so that there were no damages. You mean the bank was? The bank was, the real bank, the real bank people <laughs> were actually very fast, Man, and what, very, very fast in protecting us. What a blessing that you, I'm not even sure why you have the relationship you do with the banker. I think it's because of your mom, isn't it? Because of her accounts? What led me to, yeah, going into the brand, the branch was I had a tricky situation with the bank that needed to be resolved. And I knew I had to go in person like, like, be, with because your mom. of my mom, yeah. one of her accounts. And, and these, this is the value of making uh, real life friends in real life places because these, <laughs> as you're, as they're listening on to YouTube, pe- as they're listening to, <laughs> to people that they've never probably met before. Okay. But there take is, advice from us, but not from no, all of the other imaginary people in your life. But there are real life people in your little circle. Okay. Mm-hmm. There is value to making deposits, using a financial term here, making deposits in real friendships, uh, because one day you might actually need their help, and they're there for you. And so I knew I had a friend on the inside of of my bank, and I just went to him saying, listen, I think I'm in trouble. I didn't even know I was. But it's like, I think I think something is compromised. Will you please check my accounts? Uh, we're on the way to go, we're on the way to meet you. Um, but in the meantime, I don't want to waste any time. And I, that was a very good move that I made because obviously he was, he, he stopped everything. He checked it and he saw problems right away that needed to be fixed. And so they were like, um, like Greg just said, they were fixing things and all, and nothing was taken. So the, and from so my perspective, that was awesome. the good move I made was when I came out and said, get all your stuff. We're yes. going to the bank now because, yeah. <clears throat> and I did that quite honestly, I, I was motivated by, um, selfishness in that, no, hold on. In, in that, it was a Friday afternoon at three o'clock. I knew that banks closed no later yes. than five, but most likely are going to stop at four. And if we had to go into the weekend, that's it. Afraid that something yeah. treacherous was happening, every second counted. And I, I was afraid of my mental state by Sunday at three <laughs> o'clock in the afternoon if I didn't have answers to yeah. what was just happening. Right. You know? So, so it was very much to make sure that I did. Oh, and then wasn't that what was that Mar- leading up to Martin Luther King uh, that Monday as well? Was that was that the Monday or was the Monday before Martin Luther King? Maybe I I don't know because I, then it would have been another bank holiday. Oh, I, oh no, that already happened. <laughs> okay, that okay. already happened. Uh, so I was. Um, but meanwhile, while this event was, we were in the throes of it, I felt awful. I felt like I did a bad thing. I mean, these were my, this was the, the noise in my head. And I'm like, okay, but I too had to remind myself, but what is true? What are lies and what are truth? Nothing actually was breached. There was a threat of a breach, but no breach happened in the end because it was stopped. So everything's okay. No, there was a breach. The, there, right. The there breach was a occurred, breach, but, but we it, were able to. But nothing leaked out. Yeah. <laughs> nothing yeah. leaked out of the breach. The intruder came into the house, but we were able to get them out of the house. Right. So, yeah, if you imagine like a robber, he opened the window, and that's as far as it went. I don't he know. He opened had a foot the in. window. He had a foot He in. may have, but yeah, he, then he the, stuck, boom, the window he, was shut. <laughs> he had a foot and, uh, you know, almost so, on the floor. So what was really good about this is especially for me like you're more knowledgeable about how hackers operate they have a playbook i i didn't know the playbook i didn't know i didn't know how what they were capable of i didn't know to the extent that it would happen i didn't know about spoofing phone calls i didn't know that a fraudster can take a business phone number and put it in their caller id so that when you look at your phone it'll bypass the fraudulent scam, it'll see it as a, a, le- a legitimate phone number that your phone recognizes, that you will recognize, and that you can Google and confirm that it is, in fact, a valid phone number. Yeah. So I didn't know that was going to happen. So anyway, all all that to say, 
I was so grateful. And in the end, I think I feel all the better for it. I feel so encouraged and so blessed because I know God has got my back. You know, I know that, yes, while people <laughs> around you can also help you and they have your back, but God has our back because we are part of his faithful. And so I started researching more good news about this whole attack. And that is the enemy has a playbook. And we know what the playbook is because the scriptures that we can read anytime tell you the playbook. And so we now know what to what the enemy will use, which is lies, deception, to try to get your guard down, to make you feel afraid, to make you feel like God is nowhere, to make you feel like you're alone. But all of that is a lie. It is a lie. And so I had to remind myself of the truth. And boy, when you remind yourself of the truth of God's words, you do feel better. I feel so much better now because now I'm more fortified. I now know what the tricks are, and so I can better evade them, use my God-given intelligence to not be fooled again. I think some of what you just described is, in in a way, grace in action, right? So we went through uh, a difficult situation, and we all have difficult situations that are going to happen to us. Are we pre-fortified to deal with those situations? You could easily see, had we not had our relationship with Jesus Christ through his Blessed Mother, through total consecration, all the work, for example, that we did this year with total consecration and thinking about it so much and meditating and praying about, Mary, help me see your son and his suffering and, and bring me to him and help me to become more like Christ. Had we not done that, how much easier it would have been at the moment of the attack to immediately fall into what? Into despair. Rather than scratching as much as we can on the, you know, to get to the top of the cliff of hope and to hold on to whatever hope we can possibly hold on to and hold on to whatever trust, I could easily see how, how it would be easy to slip into that. One of the other things that I have noticed is, so it's been a couple of months since I've actually had an opportunity to go to confession. Tried to go this past weekend and it didn't happen. I've been wanting to go. Not that I'm necessarily in a state of mortal sin, but I am very much feeling not empty of grace, but very much a depletion of of the grace of the sacrament of reconciliation. What this incident brought forward were, were some of the areas of my tendency to sin. So I actually just talked to my therapist about this this morning. You know, the the level of anger well, he he placated me and said, "Okay, but this is a this is a righteous anger that you're feeling right now." I said, "Yeah," but I said, I, "I'm going to be 100 percent honest. I was imagining wanting to do violence upon this person who did this mm. to us. So it went it went beyond just you know how dare you do this mm. to if I saw this guy oh. wanting to take him by you know the shirt and just go <laughs> and bash his face in." Not the, I don't know if I actually would, but there's a great desire and temptation to do that. Well, th- what does that show, right? Mm-hmm. That showed an area that uh, I still need to work on great level of forgiveness. I need to be continually working on levels of trust, of, even more trust of God, of being able to have that greater level of empathy that you talked about. You know, There's just a lot of mm-hmm. things where an increase in virtue— probably would have served me well in this particular moment. So these incidences can not only help you to grow closer to Jesus in your dependency upon him, but it can also help you to grow closer to Jesus in that it can show and expose areas where we need to grow in virtue, grow in holiness, and areas where perhaps we were lacking. So next time, God forbid it happens again, But if some other Mm -hmm. circumstance where we feel a betrayal of trust occurs, what am I going to do between now and then that I am seeking out a greater level of grace, perhaps not wait two months between confessions, perhaps deliberately praying about God? This revealed in me a heightened level of anger that I didn't realize I possessed. Mm -hmm. So how do I become more meek? Like Jesus, how do I become more forgiving 
like Jesus? How, how do I take what happened, and how do I allow the negative to transform into a positive? And that's always difficult. And I, I remember when we were on the radio years ago, and, and we would say this phrase, and it felt it rang true at the time, and I don't know what happened in the last 10 years. I think, I think you know, just because of circumstances, my own belief in what we used to say kind of got watered down, but I still think there was a great amount of wisdom in what we used to say. People would call our radio program and share with us the most horrible things that were happening in their lives, death or loss of a child or whatever it might be, and, and just great struggles. And I remember saying to, to countless people, how much God must love you to give you a cross so heavy? And the thinking behind it is that, well, think about how heavy was the cross that God allowed his son Jesus to carry that had upon it the weight of all of the sins of the world. And how great is the love of God the Father for Jesus Christ the Son. And so when we are given crosses, we're given the opportunity to be a little bit more like Jesus. So how much God the Father is showing us his love, not by taking the crosses away, which he does sometimes, but sometimes allowing us to carry the crosses so that we can become more like Jesus. His love for us is so great that he longs for you to be more like his son, because he wants to love you in the way that he loves his son, which is completely, totally, and 100% in all things, and he wants you to be able to love as his son does, which is 100% completely and totally. And so those things get wrapped up in, you know, when a bad thing happens, when a person hurts you, when a bad situation happens, when a death occurs, a senseless death, a an unexpected event, getting laid off from your job, an unexpected divorce. These are all things that people in our circle are dealing with right now. How heavy those crosses are, how much God loves you to give you a cross so heavy. And one of the things that those crosses can do is not only help you to grow in the virtue, but help you to grow in your trust of God. And sometimes God puts heavy crosses on us so that we can finally have the realization of how dependent we are upon God because we know I cannot carry this cross alone. He's never asking us to carry the cross alone. Those are a lot of the things that were going through my head. It exposed a weakness. It exposed several weaknesses for mm-hmm. me. And I think that I've kind of slipped into a little bit of melancholy over the last few days because I don't like what I see in, in some of my reactions, particularly my thoughts. And, and so this exposed those things. And so part of me wants to get angry at the, at the scammer all over again. Just like, mm-hmm. see what you're making me feel right now? It's like, well, but maybe you've done me a service. Right. <clears throat> and a lot of um, the last couple of days have given me time to sort of further reflect on the actually something that we we did a show uh, maybe last year the last two years when we spoke with father timothy gallagher for the book um spiritual exercises or no discernment of spirits as promoted he, by he, saint ignatius yeah but he's done he's a spiritual he's, right exercises. But yeah father timothy gallagher is, he's done a whole bunch of discernment right. of spirits books okay but <clears> on <throat> one of them it was another description of a playbook of how the enemy likes to attack us, beat us down, but also how God is constantly trying to bring you back and how he's also trying to keep you on the path of righteousness. And so I was reminding myself of some of the discernment of spirits to refresh my mind on, okay, what are some of the tactics again of the enemy? Because if you don't really read it that often, you might actually forget and then your your guard is down. Um, but one that actually made me feel... A little bit affirmed was this tactic here that I'll share with you. When the fundamental direction of a person's life is moving toward God, then the enemy's tactic is to bite, sadden, place obstacles, and rob the peace with lies on that person. Okay, that's from St. Ignatius. When you have a person who's basically toward God, he's living for God, he's in a good place, when you're that person— the enemy is going to attack by biting you, robbing you of your peace, and making you feel like, see, God, you, God isn't with you. God isn't with you. And I thought, 
that was a little bit of what happened to uh, what I perceived to happen to us in the last couple of days. And so with that, it led me on another, um, not a rabbit trail, but going back on God's words, because Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20 is a wonderful description of the armor of God. It's the whole armor of God. And in Ephesians, I knew it was in there, but it was this reminder of, okay, why is it armor? Why is it called armor? Because we're in battle. <laughs> we're in spiritual battle. We need to protect ourselves from the enemy because the enemy fights dirty. And so I reread those scriptures once again. And in fact, if you permit me, I'll read it now. If you haven't heard this in a while, it's a great reminder of the armor of God, but also how the enemy fights. And it's only like 10 scriptures, so it won't take long. 10 scriptures? 10, 10, Ten verses okay. in this scripture. Okay, this is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Mm. Stand, therefore, having fastened the belt of truth around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Besides all these, taking the shield of faith with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me that utterance may be given me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Hmm. So, and then that scripture led to the final one that I would love to share with you because the Psalms are amazing. And there's like a Psalm, I feel like, for every emotional situation that we feel. But what I really wanted to be reminded of in these last couple of days of was God's assurance that he's got me. And sometimes when you feel attacked, the lie is that no one is protecting you. That's the lie that you want to believe. But scripture tells you the truth. And it can be found in this particular psalm of Psalm 121, which is eight amazing verses of assurance, which I will share with you now. <clears throat> I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. My help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. That was something that yeah. <clears throat> that, that that particular phrase was something that um, I never heard on a regular basis until we moved to Colorado. Um, and then Father uh, Father Jim, who was the vocation director at the time, whenever and he was his office was on the same floor as as mine. And sometimes he would join us for praying the Angelus or something like that, or you know some other thing that we were doing. And whenever he would lead a prayer, we'd get to the um, to the end of it. He always said, uh, "Our help is in the name of the Lord." <laughs> I remember at first going, "What do I say? What is this? <laughs> this is like an advanced Catholic yeah. test." <laughs> and then you know, and, and praying the liturgy of the hours on a regular basis. You know, you you, you read that psalm uh, on a frequent basis. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and who earth. made heaven yeah. and earth. So. 
One thing that I didn't tell you um, was I actually went back to the bank today. I had a little bit more business to conduct. And I saw that same wonderful gentleman who helped us so much the other day when we were going through this uh, terrible scam situation. And uh, he was so happy and eager to help me. And he goes, guess what? A couple days ago, another lady came in here. The same exact wow. thing happened to her. She got the phone call, emails, all under the guise of being this banking institution. And, and I just thought, wow, that's way too soon. That's what I thought this was like a crazy event. Um, so, yeah, please be on guard. <laughs> one, one of the things <laughs> you know? that we did uh, immediately after, uh, you know, because you start, here's the other nefarious thing, right? In a situation like this, it's so easy when you are the victim to want to place <clears throat> additional blame on yourself, more blame than is even necessary. So mm -hmm. I immediately was like, okay, so they were able to get a lot of personal information about mm -hmm. us. So mm -hmm. what happened? How did that happen? And, you know, when we went to <clears throat> Columbus just recently, and again, I, I need to come up with a better word than paranoid. I'm just cautious, right? I'm very cautious. So mm -hmm. when we were at the airport, I normally don't get on public Wi-Fi systems. Uh, but I, for whatever reason, I just did. Oh, well, I know why. Because our flight was delayed like six hours and I'm just like, I don't even care anymore. I mean, that really, really was kind of oh, my idea. Oh. And I'm like, I wanted to watch this. I want to finish watching this documentary I was watching. I'm just going to hop on the public Wi-Fi and watch watch this, right? Okay, well, that doesn't <clears> seem <throat> bad. And at one point, I paused, and I went to the restroom, and I came back. And when I came back, I walked past a guy on his laptop. And he had his laptop open, and I just saw he was a coder. I just saw all all sorts of code. I don't know what he was coding, but I could just, I, you know, I recognized the, a mm -hmm. screen of what, what a coder screen looks like. <clears throat> and I immediately went, this is this is the kind of thing where people can sit in public areas where there's a public Wi-Fi and there is software and there are methodologies for scanning network traffic on a given network. If you're on the network, it that that traffic can be scanned. And so mm -hmm. someone could be looking and keeping track of every website that you go on to, every place, or you mm -hmm. know, and, and there's a there are ways of capturing what you're doing and you'll see this like even in your own neighborhood for example right pull up your wi-fi how many of your neighbors wi-fi systems or printers pop up oh that's true and and you'll see printers of your neighbors like you know f printing paper right and oftentimes if you look at the wi-fi there's no lock next to it theoretically it would not be difficult for you to jump on your neighbor's printer mm -hmm. and print something to them. You could freak them out. You could be. You could do terrible things. I'm watching you. Bzzz. I mean, how much would you freak out if that yeah, happened, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, it's prudent to to secure things down. So I I had gone back and forth. When I saw that guy, I immediately, when I got back to sitting down next to you after seeing that guy with the open laptop, I was like, this is so stupid. I just broke one of my own rules uh -huh. of jumping on a public yeah. Wi-Fi like that. <clears throat> and I closed everything. I literally, I closed everything down. I closed mm -hmm. on all my apps. I I knocked off the network. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to do that again. And so I'm thinking, oh, and then we just were in a hotel as well. Well, in a hotel, you don't have to log into the network. You, you, you go through a little bit of a system, mm -hmm. but pretty much everyone is on the same network mm -hmm. within a hotel. So there's something called a virtual private network, a VPN. And there's a lot of systems and services that you can get to do that. And there's there's different <clears throat> YouTube channels I'll watch where they talk about different ones. And one guy who I watch who has you know millions of followers, Colin Furs over in England, <clears throat> he always is, has as a sponsor Surfshark. I can't imagine this guy would have Surfshark as a sponsor if it wasn't a decent system. And you know you can go and look at the reviews, lots of people. So I I immediately signed up for Surfshark. I have since signed up as an affiliate, but I don't have an affiliate code yet. Mm -hmm. not, not that it'll matter. <clears throat> I don't really care about that as much. But mm -hmm. if, you, if you're if you looking for ways of protecting yourself, I mean, again, prudence goes a long way, right? Mm -hmm. Just some simple, what, what do they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a, a pound of cure or something like that, yeah, right? that sounds right. And <clears throat> it's, it's the same kind of thing. It's like the, just being smart about your passwords. Do you have a password protocol? Mm -hmm. Do you have different passwords for every website that you visit? And it doesn't have to be hugely different. But you're like, oh, I got 60 different you know, websites. Well, so do we. 
But we have a methodology for generating passwords that, that we know, but we're going through the process of changing all those now mm -hmm. because of what happened and do that at, you know, on a frequent basis. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, it's been a couple of years since we updated all of our passwords, so we were about due. And, and you know, make sure that you have um, a protocol for taking care of those kinds of things. And I, I think you know, the same kinds of things just it, – it, it's amazing how an incident like this makes you think about what's your health protocol? How 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 much are you taking care? Of? How, how many bullet point checkpoint marks are you doing right now to take care of your health? How much? What's your maintenance schedule on your house and your car? I mean, think yeah. about it. What did we just have done? We just had our windows clean. Why? Because we've been here five years and our windows were a mess <laughs> and they needed to be cleaned. <laughs> and it's like, and and I keep trying to clean them and I can only go so far before I need some help to do that. Mm -hmm. it, I know it, I'm I, in my mind it makes sense what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say, but it's like. We need checkup points in our lives. I mean, there's there's spiritual checkups. We're talking about going on a retreat. A after a while, I need to go on a retreat because I need a spiritual reset and a checkup. Yeah. And so that's another one of those things I was thinking about in terms of all these things that are happening. Are, you know, what are the areas in your lives in your life that needs a checkup right now and ne maybe needs a bit of a clean slate reset? And this just kind of woke me up in that regard. So. Well, yeah, I definitely feel more awake <laughs> than ever before now that I know. How bad it can be, but um, again, I keep getting I, a, I keep getting a, a, a text from a guy named Mac Baron. I don't trust him at all. <laughs> I just keep saying, "Who are you? Leave me alone!" Right. Blocked, blocked, <laughs> blocked. You know, when I was reading um, Ephesians, and I was uh, reading the, the particular verse about you know the the principalities, the powers, you know this present darkness. Yeah. I wanted to add. Through email, through text messages, the devil will use technology and fight you there and try to get you there. Well, I'm surprised you didn't use the analogy that you keep using over the weekend of well, the Garden no, of Eden. Well, that, and that's what I, I was just getting ready to share that. Um, that was probably the first thing that I, I thought of. I went to Eve at the tree talking to that snake because the snake, a.k.a. Satan, <laughs> had a limit. He's like, all Satan could do okay, church is lady. tempt... Eve, but he needed Eve to actually take the apple and eat it. So the whole point was that Satan needed Eve to do something because he could not do it all. He could not force her and make her sin. He could just tempt her into doing it. So it's like, okay, that's the limit. So the limit that the scammers use is very similar. They try to get you to act. They they can only go so far and, and dangle a little carrot in front of you and try to present you with enough distorted truth to make you believe it's real because they're trying to get you to click on something, to give something to them so that they then they could finish and, um, and rob and steal and whatever they want to do. And so I know, like what you're saying, that you pride yourself on knowing how to be you know, diligent and not, and safeguard your protection Dang it. of your things. And pride. I've got to work on pride. pride. Okay. You I pride, pride yourself. Pride oh, well, yeah, there's got to be a better word for See, that. See, pride it, is so bad. It keeps exposing other weaknesses. <laughs> yeah, like I know never to share my password. I know that. I know this. They got it out of me anyway because they tricked me completely. And I felt like, oh man. Eve was also tricked into thinking that it was good. And, it, and I, I was also tricked. And I know, but they made me think. And I had no reference point. I guess that was the other side. I didn't know that. And you that... almost got us kicked out of the garden. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. Yeah, like, once again. What if this was the one time this verification of a password was needed to save me? And I thought that it was part of the solution. Well, now I know 100% of the time you will never, ever, 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 ever need to surrender a password under any circumstances with, a, with a bank. We won't. Never, no. ever, 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 ever. We won't even give it to the kids. I won't give it I to the kids. I won't even tell you. I won't give it to the kids. Nothing, 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 nothing. Yeah. And so now I know. And so just in case you weren't 100% sure at that point, <laughs> Let me emphatically tell you. Learn from our example. And uh, and so, again, these were ultimately really good lessons. It was painful, but I feel all the better for it. I'm now more going to be a lot more responsible and I can better safeguard, you know, but also I have the comfort of God's word and God's truth. And 
at the end of the day, I just felt like God has this. God has this. I am not actually, you know, injured. I'm I'm just emotionally injured. But that was it. No actual physical damages occurred at all. Thank goodness. So as our friends, uh, Matt and Catherine over at Catholic and Small Town, oftentimes use the phrase, uh, this was your service journalism for the yes. week. It was learn from our uh, yes. mistakes uh, so that you don't repeat the same mistakes that we did. Uh, perhaps it's time for you to do a little bit of an audit on all of your checklists that need to be checked right now. Hey, uh, thank you for hanging out with us, for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't already signed up for the newsletters over at rosiearmy.com, go do that. We'd love to have you be a part of our community. School of Mary is another way that you can uh, get on the lists as well as getting some great resources. We're coming up very, very soon on a new cycle of total consecration. It'll begin, I believe, February 12th, if I'm not mistaken, to end on March 25th. And so we're also about to start new Lenten season on uh, the 14th of February. And so you can start maybe two days earlier by doing the preparation for total consecration to Jesus through Mary. If you've never done it before, it's very edifying your first time. But if you need to renew, this could also be a great time to do it. We have uh, over 70 videos that will walk you through the whole thing. Don't let that number scare you. There's a lot of great content where we will pray with you every single day. And then we also offer some additional video reflections for each day's prayers. doesn't take a lot. It's a, it's a small commitment, but maybe consider that for your Lenten exercises this year. All of that is available to you 100% free over at schoolofmary.com. It includes a downloadable, I'm trying to find it underneath my desk here, a downloadable uh, workbook, which is normally there. Where it is. Yeah. No, nope, that's not it. Uh, there's a workbook. That's a no, hey, that's a journal I forgot was done there, though. Uh, <laughs> I have. Normally, it's not there. I don't know where it is. There's a workbook or a, a hundred page workbook that you can download uh, to uh, help you with that. It has all the prayers in it uh, and a lot of uh, spaces for you to journal and think about. People have been loving this. We've been so edified by how much uh, it's been helping other people to grow closer to Jesus through Mary. So if you've ever thought about total consecration, do that right now. Schoolofmary.com. The next cycle will start on February 12th. And then uh, there's a lot of people, and we have a community, so you can talk to other people as you're going through it as well. So uh, in addition to that, thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the show here on YouTube, if you're watching it, or left a nice, kind review over at iTunes. That helps so much. It's been over a year since anyone left a review on iTunes, which might explain some of our uh, download numbers recently. As well as if you want to help support this apostolate, uh, you can always go to rosaryarmy.com slash donate. So thank you for being here. Pray your rosary every single day. And do whatever it takes to be holy. Rosaryarmy.com, schoolofmary.com. We'll talk to you again very soon. Dot com. See you, folks. Bye. <laughs>